Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to start your space uh, design assignment, which you're creating a three-dimensional en environment. Um, you're creating a tree line street. Now there's nothing saying that it has to be trees. Um, it could be any sort of object that you want to repeat and head back to a vanishing point. Um, the rule on this is that you want to have everything recede back to a single point. So it's a one point um, perspective. What I'm going to do is show you guys how to get started with this. And it always works to start with some sort of, of rough guide. You build yourself a little map, um, cheat sheet. So we always want to start with the horizon line, right? We start with a blank, empty canvas. We fill it in with one line. We have created a uh, sky and ground. Right? Now, doing this, I am basically just doing the ability with Photoshop to where if I hold down with a mouse key, and then hold down shift and then drag the mouse, I can lock into perfect horizontal or vertical. So by creating a horizon line, uh, we are creating sky and land. And a lot of people want to start right here in the middle and roughly separate your page uh, vertically um, in half. That's okay, but it's kind of boring, right? Um, you guys remember your rules, the rule of thirds maybe. If you create your vanishing line up at about a third, um, now you have unequal distribution, but it makes it so that we're looking more, uh, we're higher up and we're looking down, so we're seeing more of the ground plane than the sky. That can work. Or if we go further down, if we draw a horizon line, now we're looking, we're down and kind of looking up and we're seeing more sky than ground. Um, that tends to be much more interesting um, than straight across. So there's nothing wrong with straight across and you can do more ground or more sky, but this just makes it more visually interesting. Same way with uh, creating your vanishing point. Most people tend to want to just plunk it right in the middle, right? And then that can kind of work, but that tends to be a little boring, right? So keeping that rule of thirds, maybe our vanishing point is off to a side somewhere. So now everything we do is going to be on um, this vanishing point. All of our lines will recede back here. So let's start by building a road. Right, so we can start here and say, well, maybe doing this trick, I'm clicking a dot. I'm gonna come out somewhere else, hold down the shift and click a dot, say, well, there's part of my road. Right, and then my road could come over here. Right, and you guys can see already I've got sky, I've got land, and I've got road. Maybe I want a really wide road and it comes way over here. Right, it's completely up to you and where you want to build this sort of a um, Bob Ross painting, right? It's you can plant your road, plant your trees wherever you want. I'm going to go right about there because why not? So now we have road, we have ground, we have sky. Now we want to plant our trees and we never really plant our trees right on the edge of the road. So we want to add um, another line that will become the base of our trees. So you have a little bit of a median before you start getting your trees. And maybe this one goes over here somewhere. And we want the tops of our trees. And I'm going to say I want my trees on this side to be really tall. So now I have um, big tall trees, right? And maybe my trees over here go like that. So that's the bottom of the tree. That's the top of the tree. I'm going to create a new layer just to sort of rough it in. Trees are always going to be vertical. So you can see that I'm going to draw... Perhaps that's my tree, right? And I can draw some sort of squiggle. It says, hey, there's my tree. So when I plant my trees, what's going to happen is everything is going to go from this baseline down here all the way up to the top, and it's going to hit that diagonal. So what I can do is make a copy of that tree layer, right, dragging the layer down to the new layer icon, or I can hit control J as a quick key. And then if I hit command T or control T, um, I can now move my tree. And I can scale my tree up. And really all I'm doing is sort of roughing it in so that the size again goes from the baseline to wherever I was chopping that tree, right? So the top is up here, the base is down here, um, starting to create the illusion of depth. And we want to have always um, at least three trees, preferably more. 
Um, if you have just two, if you have one, there's no doubt, right? It's just there. If you have two, one will be smaller, of course, but it's it's you're not setting up a pattern. You need at least three to build a pattern. And then I can plant some more trees on the right-hand side if I want to. And even by taking off the guidelines, you can see that there's something starting to form, right? Um, you do not need to use just squiggle drawn trees. Um, have fun making your trees. Whatever it is you make, um, have some fun playing and then just repeat them. If you wanna add a little bit of variety, you can take some of these and I'm gonna take this one and flip it. So Command T to free transform. I'm gonna right click and I can scale and do other stuff but I can also flip horizontal. So now I'm adding a little bit of variety because this tree is now pointing the wrong way, right? So I can have a left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, alternating rhythm if I wanted to. Or if I wanted, I could maybe just, maybe this one, the shift key pushed in, this one gets a little bit skinnier. Maybe I give it a slight rotation, right? Just adding a little bit of variety to make it more interesting. Since it's on its own layer, I could always just sort of go in and color and this becomes a slightly different looking tree. So you have that ability to go in and modify individually once you've sort of figured them out. Um, I really want to have another one smaller. Now this is another thing a lot of students tend to do is make everything. They tend to like forget that these trees are supposed to feel like they're going like way out into space, right? So um, make make some more they're they're uh, and yeah they're gonna get tiny um, that's kind of the idea right so the smaller they get the farther away they feel I could almost even get away with having another one in there so my my forest is getting nice and small that's okay right and then when I zoom back out now it's really feeling like that's going away to somewhere Right, the spacing isn't necessarily equal, and that's okay. Um, you'll have to use your eye. There's some tricks to get it to where they space equally, um, but it's it's more complex than you guys want to mess around with for now. Um, so stick with simple, and um, eyeball it. And there's nothing saying that they have to be perfectly spaced. It's your world. Um, create it how you want to. Another cool trick that you can use when you are making. Um, your designs is to use um, gradients. Gradients are wonderful for creating kind of a sense of depth. So I'm gonna say, let's take and pretend I need a ground plane, I need a sky, and I need a road. So I'm gonna start with a ground plane. And I'm gonna use, let's see which way do I want to do this. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna create a marquee tool with the marquee tool, I can actually just draw a space here um, around what I want to be my ground plane. I'm gonna make a new layer for it. I'm gonna use a gradient tool. So the gradient tool might be in the same drawer, or it will be in the same drawer as the bucket tool, paint bucket. So some people have a paint bucket and then they're like, where is it? It's in the gradient tool. It's in the same drawer. It has a, a black to white fade on it. Um, and up here, we have the option to open it up and play with our gradient. And we have um, some pre-made ones in Photoshop that are kind of nice. Um, and so we can pick ones that, that actually might work pretty well for something. But I'm not tied to that. I can actually make my own gradient if I want. And the way it works is you have this, this band that shows sort of the start and the stop. And if I click on this little box down here at the bottom, I can pick whatever color I want. And since I'm going for green or crown, I'm gonna go for like a green. Why not? Right down here at this end, I'm gonna say, you know what? I want this one to be maybe a lighter green, maybe a little bit more yellowish. Right, so now I have a fade. I can grab these little things and move them. I can add more just by clicking down here and adding another one. So maybe somewhere in the middle, I want it to turn blue for whatever reason, right? So I can go in and modify. I'm gonna leave it just a dark green to a light green. 
And then on the gradient tool, um, we have options. We can do a linear, which is what we're going to use today. Um, but you can do other ones, a radial, um, a weird diamond shaped one, a fade in and fade out, um, star shape. So there's some, there's ones you can play with up here. But in this case, I just want to do a gradient linear and I click and drag. Oh, I'm in a grayscale mode, image, I'm in image mode. If you're in grayscale, you can go to image mode and change it to RGB. Don't fall in. Now I get my color. So I can click and drag. And I now have grass. Yay. Now, the way this works is a short drag. You get a harder edge, right? Um, because it's fading from a start to finish. I can go at an angle and figure out where stuff goes. Again, that shift click trick works. So if I click a spot, hold down shift, you'll see that it's locking it into a vertical. I can say, you know what? I want it to start light close up and get darker. Maybe I want it to be dark and get lighter as it gets further up. And I kind of like that one. So it's dark um, down here and gets lighter as it gets further away. Just because of separating of work, I want to do the sky on a new layer. I'm going to draw my key tool, draw out to my um, sky area. And I'm going to create um, a new gradient. I'm just curious, what do we have for blues? We got some that look like they could make some nice skies. So we'll just do that. So we now have, we've got sky. Yay. Now my road, um, instead of using the rectangular marquee, I'm going to go down to the um, next set down. These are lasso tools and I want to use the polygon. And what that allows me to do is just do a dot to dot. And I can basically click around and make my selection by doing a dot to dot. Say so this is the area that I want to be my road layer. Go for a gradient. And I want a purple road today. Why not? And now I can do a gradient and now I have a purple road. And select. And then if I turn off my reference line, you can see that I've already got a semi-believable world starting to come. The gradients help show a bit of depth. I've got um, trees that are fading off to the horizon line. I've got a road that's going off. I've got grass. Um, there's a horizon starting to work. If you want, you can um, find some images and use images in addition. So I've got, you know, a tree. Now, um, be aware that you can't just go to Google, or in my case, DuckDuckGo, and can't go to the internet and just randomly steal stuff. Um, that's illegal, <clears throat> unethical, all of that. Um, but for what we're doing, we can get away with it because we are students and you guys are trying to do this uh, as a learning experience. But um, so you have a bit of a, a leeway for this. Um, and we can go into more if you guys want. But for now, I'm just going to say, let's do this. I'm um, going to copy my image, come back to Photoshop. I'm going to paste my image in and turn off all those trees for now. Um, I want to use a layer mask. And I, I know I've talked about these in other videos, but the joy of a layer mask is that you can erase without actually erasing. You just hide the pixels. So, um, on my layer, I'm going to go down to this icon where it's a box with a circle in the middle. And if you click that, you get this little white um, piece that sticks up. And the way layer masks work is whatever is white is visible, whatever is black is invisible. So if I go back to a black paintbrush, it looks like I'm erasing, right? Because I'm hiding with a black paintbrush. But if I switch back to white, I can paint it right back in. It's almost like magic. It's amazing how much um, fun these are. So I can use a black paintbrush and basically just kind of go around and cut it out. You can take your time and do as much as you want. There are tons of videos to show you how to do nice clean cuts. Um, for this demo, I am not going to be overly precise. I'm just kind of getting the idea of tree, right? Um, 
and it's however much time you want to take to do this um, is completely up to you. You want to keep the trunk. And then once I have kind of a, a basic cutout, I can get a bigger brush and just kind of go around and paint out all the sky in the background. This is um, really cool. And a lot of times when I'm doing stuff, if I'm just mocking stuff up, I will do um, a quick and dirty cutout like this that's not overly wonderful. <coughs> if that's okay. Um, just enough to get the idea. And then at a later date, if I want to go back and refine my cutout, I can. That's the joy of this is it's non-destructive. You can always go back at it, at, and work on it in more detail. So I've now got a tree. Yay for my tree. All right. um, I can turn on my guidelines so that I can say, well, this tree would plant right about there, given that size. And then if I make a copy, I can free transform. Right, I've got another tree that this tree now goes up there. And I can plant this one again along those guidelines, along to the bottom and along to the top. I can add more of them as I go. All right, uh, well, my recording did a weird blip, so it stopped recording when I got to roughly this point. So I'm going to start over from here as sort of a part two. Um, sorry about that, folks. Anyway, um, we've created sort of this believable sense of depth, hopefully, um, by stacking our trees, and you can have more trees as you go. If I turn off that um, guideline layer, you can start seeing where the trees all fit. So there's some tricks we can do to start making things stand out a little bit more. One of the biggies is all of these trees, especially this one that I've got, um, they're all blending into each other, right? There's no differentiation. Um, easily to see what's what between the trees. Um, in my world I'm creating, everything gets lighter way out there on the horizon line, right? So it would make sense that maybe my trees got lighter as well, sort of atmospheric perspective, right? Um, <clears throat> so I have a trick I can do on the tree that's farther away. I'm going to pick that I'm going to hit Image Adjustments Levels. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this, but I like levels because it's simple. Um, this little chart is your, your lights and darks. So this is your darkest darks. This is your lightest lights. And in the middle, we have the um, sort of mid-tone. If I drag this one way, you can see that it starts basically saying everything to the right of this becomes white, lighter, right? Um, or I can go darker. And so I can lighten this tree up down here a ways, and then I can come back to each tree, image adjustments, levels. And maybe this one's just a little bit less light, right? Um, and there's still a little bit of a differentiation. Um, maybe the tree that's closer, I want to go the other way. So image, adjust, levels. I want to make this one go darker. Right? So I can start building up a progressive rhythm right, of uh, dark getting lighter as it gets further away, which is what I'm doing with my gradients. So that starts adding a little bit of an effect there. Another effect that we want is shadows. We live in a three-dimensional world where opaque objects block light. Right? We see shadows, and shadows are really good for defining where objects sit in space. So I can easily create a shadow with this, um, and I'm going to use this mid one so you guys can see it. Um, what I'm going to do is with that layer, I'm going to make a copy. And on the copy, I'm going to go to the layer mask, right click on the layer mask and hit apply. What that is is like a big eraser. So whatever was hidden is now completely gone. Um, the reason I did this is so that I can easily paint a shadow. So right now, with the pixel selected, I want to switch to a black paintbrush. And if I color, it's going to color everywhere. You don't want to do that. Uh, but we have this great trick up here at the top of my layer stack. There's all these things called locks. Right? And if you click the little grain white checkerboard lock, what that does is says that I can color, but only where there's already pixels. So by coloring black, I'm basically just coloring a silhouette 
of that tree. And then I can unlock it, and I now have a silhouette, right? And it's on its own layer. And then with this, I'm going to free transform. And with free transform, I can do things like scale it, right? And rotate it so I can do some rotating if I wanted. Um, I want to lay that tree shadow down on the ground. So if you right click in here, we have some other things we can use, such as skews and distorts. And I like distort because it starts getting, right? You can grab each corner sort of independent and start creating an interesting ground plane by moving it. And you'll get there eventually. Um, that works a little bit. Oh, it looks like I missed some shadow. Okay. Anyways, there's also another really cool thing in here called um, perspective. Well, in perspective, I can grab this and make it because, you know, when it gets further away, it's going to get smaller. So I can use between that and the store, I can start building, or even in this case, scale, I can start building a shadow. And I'm using cues from the actual image itself. It says that the sun is coming from somewhere over here on the right side and kind of coming across. So I can sort of guess and estimate where that shadow would actually be. And I'm not worrying about being perfect for this, this assignment, just for the demo. But somewhere in there starts looking like it, it works. <clears throat> Let me fix that spot I missed. Okay. Um, so that starts working. Put that underneath the tree so it's blocked. We'll overlap. Um, and then we're going to take the opacity and just move that opacity down. Right? Because that will let some of the color show through. There's enough ambient light to where the shadow isn't going to be perfectly black. It's going to be lighter. So we can still see the ground plane. Um, yeah. And then we can take that same one. The copy, move that over to this other tree, and that would actually be underneath. And since it's a smaller tree, it's going to be a smaller shadow. And you're going to also have, if you want to draw guidelines and where those shadows would line up, you could also do that because those are also going to follow the same um, rules for proceeding to a vanishing point. So. Hopefully you get that idea and you can play with how you do your shadows. That starts adding another layer of depth to it. And remember your trees on this side, if you do them on the right hand side, would also be casting shadows across the road. So you could add those, you could add a shadow further down, even though you don't see the tree. If you have a pattern going of shadows over here, the shadows would still continue. It makes it feel like the, the world continues behind you. So there's different tricks you can do with those. Um, and then the other trick that we want to do is adding a little bit of texture and we can cheat and use photos a little bit. So right now the trees are starting to look fairly realistic because they're real photos. Um, but the, the ground and the road and the sky are also not all that realistic, right? They're just abstract colors. So we can steal some pictures. So the clouds one, I'm going to use one that already feels like it has depth, right? The, the clouds closer or bigger, the clouds smaller or farther away. back here and I'm just gonna put that above my sky layer scale this up adjust it to sort of plant it basically kind of how I want and I, I want to see some of those clouds and I kind of like a little bit of these clouds right um, there's my sky now that's a little intense for me so I want to dial down the opacity a lot not a lot, but some. Enough to where you still see some of that sky through, but the clouds are there um, taking up some space as well. So if you're lucky, you can find an image that works straight on. For the ground, I want to show you a little bit different trick. So I'm not going to get grass this time that looks like it's receding already. I want to create that illusion. So this grass looks like I'm looking kind of up top, straight down on it. And for that one, I can, all right, so we've laid in the grass, but if you look, it, it just doesn't look right, right? So the stuff that's farther away should be a lot smaller. The stuff that's closer should be bigger. Um, it just feels very flat. 
and we don't want that effect. So what we can do, um, free transform, but this time we're going to use a cool trick. Let me move this down a little bit so we can see. Um, we're going to use the perspective tool. So this is cool. We're going to right click on the, while we're in a free transform and hit perspective. And what that does, you can kind of see, is it creates this illusion of, of it basically being laid down. We're taking that, that box and turning it into a more perspective based background. So now that if I go closer, you'll see that it, it feels almost like we've laid a carpet out and things that are farther away are smaller, things that are closer or bigger. Um, the one thing to be aware of with this is that whatever pattern you use, when it gets close, this can get really stretched out. So make sure you have a high res image to start with or else it starts looking very funky. Since this thing, um, we're going more just for an illusion, I can take that layer again and lower the opacity. We're just looking for the effect of, we don't want that grass necessarily fully there. We want to see some of that gradient behind. So that starts adding a little bit of believability. You do the same thing for the road, find some sort of cool texture and build from there. Um, but remember it all goes back to that basic starting point. Right? We have some guidelines that we use to establish the separation between the ground and the sky. Then we use some guidelines to separate the ground um, and the, the road from each other. We set up these baselines and where we wanted to plant our trees. Um, and then once you start following from that, you can add details, right? You start lightening and darkening things. You start adding shadows, um, whatever other details you want to start building so that um, by the end, it starts feeling like you have a, a rather believable world. So good luck, happy clipping, clicking, and happy world building.